Welcome to Walt Disney World's 25th anniversary special, Witching You Were Here. Starring Caroline Ray with Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Mary Poppins, The Stilt Birds, Bubble Nicholas, Hercules, Quasimodo, with Allison Jones and John Racer, two kids from 1971 who time travel through the 25 year history of Walt Disney World. Caroline Ray. I play Aunt Hilda on the TV show Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I'm here in Orlando, Florida for the Walt Disney World Resort's 25th anniversary special. But I'm not here as Hilda. I'm here as Caroline, your happy-go-lucky, effervescent tour guide. So uh, put on your mouse ears and let's get this 25th anniversary show on the road. When they called me and asked me if I wanted to host this TV special, I was so thrilled, I immediately screamed, yes! Which prompted my sister to ask, what? Have you got a date? What are you gonna wear? Well, what else would I wear on a date with Mickey Mouse? But mouse ears. Thanks, cutie. They look better on you. Hey, Mickey! Oh, thanks for bringing the book, Mickey. I forgot all about it. Say hi to Minnie for me. Oh. Where are all the good ones taken? Do you know what this is? This is the witch's book of ultimate evil spells and hexes. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm just joking. This is the history of Walt Disney World. And on this special, we're going to celebrate that history. Hey, aren't you that witch? Oh, no, I'm not a witch. Oh, I just play one on TV. Go on, do some magic for me. No, 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 I don't do magic. I'm just a regular person. I can't just snap my fingers and make my wishes come true. <laughs> See, it didn't work. You're still here. But you didn't say the magic word. Oh, yeah, right. Like saying hocus pocus is going to help. Yeah. All right. Hocus pocus. Ugh. Oh, no. I just made Walt Disney World disappear. I'm sorry, Walt. I'm sorry, Mickey. Sorry, everyone. I, I, I swear, I'm not a witch. OK, I have my mood swings, but I, I'm really, I'm just an actress on TV. I play a witch. And I was just joking about this being a book of evil spells and hexes. See? Oh, it is a magic book. And look, there's Walt talking about his plans for Walt Disney World. That's it. This is the exact spot where Walt Disney World was built. I guess I do have powers. I must have somehow time traveled back to 1965. Boy, I am good. Hmm, let's see. It says here, to turn this land into Walt Disney World, Walt turned to his animation techniques. Did you know that he pre-planned everything in his animated films with storyboards, character sketches, and models? He worked out every detail. And he did the same thing to turn this swampland into the number one vacation destination in the world. Everything, and I mean everything, was designed to a master plan. The army of artists who would design, engineer, and art direct it all were called Imagineers. They created fantastical things like castles, monorails, and my personal favorite, flying elephants. Along with practical things like the world's first telephone system to use underground cable and the world's largest laundry system. Even the rooms for the contemporary resort were pre-planned, each pre-built at a separate location before being slid into place like a giant chest of drawers. This is better than a pop-up book. Finally, in October 1971, Walt Disney World opened to tens of thousands of very enthusiastic guests. That is, of course, if you weren't one of the unlucky ones stuck in that big traffic jam headed to the park. Everyone wanted to be on hand to say hi to Mickey on his big day. And who can blame them? Hey, you know something? I have a kooky idea. Why don't I use my newfound magic to show you the incredible 25-year history of Walt Disney World? We'll start at the beginning, the opening day of the Magic Kingdom in 1971. 
Let's see if a new magic word can give me a smoother landing in a better spot. Abracadabra. And all better and happier together. Hey, this doesn't look like the grand opening of Walt Disney World. So much for Abracadabra. Honey, who's that strange lady on the stage? No! Oh, I'm next to Lincoln in a theater. For the vast future also. Oh. <laughs> this is the Hall of Presidents. Oops. And our children's <laughs> Sorry, children. Folks. For a thousand generations. Rejoice. Boy, that was embarrassing. But at least I made it. I'm at the Magic Kingdom on opening day in 1971. <laughs> Check it out! I'm not exactly dressed appropriately for 1971. Excuse me while I slip into something a little more groovy. Shazam! Oops. <laughs> I was going for something far out, and instead I got peachy keen. I haven't quite got a handle on this magic stuff yet, but uh, I'll make this work. But I'm losing the glasses. Who are you talking to? My TV audience. Well, they're no, not exactly mine. Oh my gosh! You're a big TV star, aren't you? Is it that obvious? Is that lady on laughing? She is not Goldie Hahn. She's Elizabeth Montgomery from Bewitched. Oh, right! Look, everybody, it's the Bewitched lady! No, I'm not the Bewitched lady. I play Aunt Hilda on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. It's on Friday nights, or it will be in 1996. Are you saying you're from the future? <laughs> That's impossible. Fitting into my jeans after Thanksgiving dinner? That's impossible. But time travel apparently isn't. Believe what you want, but I'm, we, I mean, the TV audience and I are off to see the Magic Kingdom. Hey, if we stick with her, we'll be on TV. Come on. So how did you guys like the Haunted Mansion? That was even better than the Jungle Cruise. How come you didn't go in the Hall of Presidents? Uh, been there, done that. <laughs> hey, we've got to get to a certain grand opening in 1982. You really think you can travel time, don't you? Yes, I do, and I can prove it. Sign this. What is it? Uh, it's a standard release form, just in case something should go wrong. When you're traveling through time at the speed of light, one teeny tiny miscalculation, and you could wind up a charred clump of gelatinous goo. Neat! Well, great. Let's go. Hang on to your bell bottoms. Alakazam! I don't believe it. We made it. <laughs> well, not exactly. What happened to your dress? Oh, no. I look like Buddy Hackett from The Love Bug. Hold this. Well, it's better than turning into a charred clump of goo. I guess Alakazam doesn't quite cut it. Where are we? We're in Epcot. Epcot? <laughs> What's in Epcot? Well, Epcot means, um, OK, let's look in the book. In 1965, Walt Disney announced a new project called Epcot, an experimental model of a future city. This place would be, among other things, a showcase for technological discoveries. New technology? Oh, you mean like in the computer wore tennis shoes? Yes, but not nearly as cute as Kurt Russell. Mm. Epcot was jokingly dubbed Waltopia because it reflected Walt's optimistic belief that technology could create a better city, a better society, a better world. But after Walt Disney passed away, it seemed that his last and maybe even his greatest dream might never come true. Oh, no. Don't worry. 
the Imagineers took one of Disney's greatest strengths, the theme park, and combined it with his Epcot ideas. It wouldn't be a city. It would be a world's fair, divided into two equal parts. Future World, a section exploring intriguing ideas in science and technology. And the World Showcase, a place where you can travel to the nations of the world without getting jet lag or losing your luggage. Epcot would have Walt Disney's optimism for the technology of the future and would be a place celebrating world cultures, where we can see it really is a small world after all. Isn't that a song? Yes, and don't you dare sing it. Just as the Magic Kingdom had been built around the Cinderella Castle, the Imagineers knew that Epcot would also need a signature structure, an icon large enough that it could be seen from miles away and that would embody the two themes of the new park. The solution to their design dilemma? Spaceship Earth, the world's largest geosphere. Oh, I get it. It's like the world and the future. Thank you, Albert Einstein. Spaceship Earth would be 180 feet tall, as tall as Cinderella Castle, and weigh about 16 million pounds, with 2.2 million cubic feet of space inside. That's enough room for 101 million Dalmatians. Construction began in late 1979, with the target opening date of October 1st, 1982. That's only three years. It takes me longer to get ready for a date. And to finish on time, construction workers had to start earlier and earlier in the morning. Finally, as a practical joke, one construction crew showed up for work in their pajamas. Then they had a big pillow fight, which got totally out of hand. Parents had to be called in, and everyone was grounded. <laughs> really? No, not really. Instead, they raised the workforce to 10,000, and the park opened on time. Thanks to all the new technology available in 1982, Disney Imagineers gave Epcot five times the number of special effects as the Magic Kingdom. Much of this new Disney magic can be found in Spaceship Earth and the surrounding pavilions of Future World, including the universe of energy. Also, there's the land, and finally, the journey into imagination. Welcome to Epcot's World Showcase, a place where people come from every corner of the earth to acknowledge their diversity and celebrate the beautiful richness of life. Hey, I'm serious. World Showcase is a place where people can salute the brotherhood of people and get a taco. Isn't it beautiful, kids? 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 This isn't funny. Kids! Woo! What? What is it? Do you know where the kids are? Oh, you do? I feel like June Lockhart and Lassie. Where did they go, boy? Oh, they ran past Germany and they're somewhere in France. Ask Bubble Nicholas for help. Bubble Nicholas. What's a Bubble Nicholas? Stick around for a special appearance by Mary Poppins when Witching You Are Here continues. Witching You Are Here, Walt Disney World's 25th anniversary special. Where is Bubble Nicholas? Oh, I think that's Bubble Nicholas.
thought she was right behind us. Well, she is kind of a scatter brain. You know, some of the things she said were crazy. Yeah, like that stuff she said about the future president. A peanut farmer, an actor, a shrub. She didn't say he was a shrub. She said it was a bush. Ah, oh, how are we going to find Caroline anyway? Hello? Hello? Down here in the book? Oh, there you are. Mary Poppins here. You're obviously without supervision, and since I'm also a member of the Magic Guild, it's practically perfect that I stand in for Caroline. Let's take a quick tour around the World Showcase, and maybe we'll run into her. The World Showcase is a lovely collection of pavilions around the lagoon just ahead of you. Each pavilion exquisitely recreates the flavor of a different nation through carefully detailed architecture and landscaping. Even the restaurants and shops are staffed by real citizens of the host nations. Share a bratwurst with good friends at Oktoberfest in Germany. Explore the exotic wonders of China, including its dancers, artisans, and acrobats. In Paris, eat snails at a sidewalk cafe. The cafe is on the sidewalk, not the snails. Take in the natural beauty of Canada. And they've recreated some of my favorite spots in merry old England. You're sure to have a jolly holiday. A Tory gate is the entry to Epcot's Japan, where you can take in an 83-foot-high pagoda. Its five stories symbolize sky, water, earth, wind, and fire. I think my mom has one of their albums. Mine too. Across the lagoon lies Italy. Ah, oh, the art, the pasta, the chimney sweeps. Oh, wait, that's England again. Or in Mexico, listen to the mariachis, take a swing at a piñata, or have a fajita and discuss the ramifications of NAFTA. And if you're homesick, there's always the American adventure. Bubble Nicholas. J'ai perdu deux enfants at World Showcase. There they are. Peter, Susie, Caroline. Where have you been? Oh. Thank you, Bubble Nicholas. Nice guy. Not a big talker. I'm so glad I found you guys. <laughs> Us too. Oh, I was so worried that Disney would never hire me again. Oh, you can't hire Caroline Ray. She's that dizzy gal who lost those kids in time. <laughs> hey, we've got to go. We've got to be in 1989. OK, I used Hocus Pocus, Abracadabra, uh, Eye of Newt, and Toe of Frog. Is that fat free? Let me try the finger snapping bit. You're not too good at it. Thanks for being so supportive. Oh. <gasps> oh, it's the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular at Disney MGM Studios. Oh, and Indy is so cute. Thank you. 
Dave, this hand only has three fingers and a thumb. That's because it's Minnie Mouse. Hey, the Indiana Jones would make a great movie. Yeah, they should cast Donny Osmond. I'll mention it to George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. So how'd they come up with the idea to build this place anyway? Here, I'll show you. All right. The concept behind Disney MGM Studios started back in 1985. The Disney Imagineers were planning a new movie attraction for Epcot. Using the latest audio animatronics, it was to be a journey through the movies. At the same time, they also decided to do an attraction that would show how animated movies were made. Then, the number one guy at the Walt Disney Company, Mr. Michael Eisner, decided to use these two ideas as a foundation for an entirely new theme park, the Disney MGM Studios. Like Epcot and the Magic Kingdom, the Disney MGM Studios have some iconic structures. Isn't it ironic? No, that's a song. <laughs> Iconic means like an icon. You know, an icon is an image, a figure, a representation. For example, the Eiffel Tower is an icon because it represents France. Can you two smarty pants think of an icon that represents the USA? The Statue of Liberty. The what else? No, I'm sorry. The correct answer is the Golden Arches. <laughs> but thanks so much for playing. And speaking of icons, the Disney MGM Studios features the spectacular Earful Tower. Would you believe each mouse ear weighs 5,000 pounds? And if you were standing on top of the Earful Tower, you'd see that the park was laid out in a very familiar shape. Hi, Mickey. The other icon at Disney MGM Studios is Grauman's Chinese Theater, a life-size replica built from the 1927 blueprints. From the beginning, it was decided that Disney MGM Studios would be a working studio. Even before the theme park opened, several movies and television shows had been shot there. Like Epcot, the Disney MGM Studios puts you in the heart of the action. You get a glimpse of just how the magic of movies is accomplished, from special effects to stunt work. But there's more to the Disney MGM Studios than a backstage peek at movie making. You get to be in the movies, like clowning around with streetmosphere actors, and running around the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids set. Or walking through recreations of a Hollywood that never was and always will be. All this talk about the movies is making me want popcorn. Yeah, I'm starving. Of course you are. It's 1989. You haven't eaten anything in 18 years. Where do you want to go to eat? Would you like to watch TV at the kitchen table at the nostalgic primetime cafe? Or would you rather watch mutant monsters gobble up B movie actors from the comfort of your own car at the sci-fi dine-in theater? You know, call me crazy, but I just love any movie where a giant anything destroys a major American city. Or, I know, let's eat at a swanky hangout, the Hollywood Brown Derby. What do you say we do lunch? I'll call you. Peter, hurry up and finish your dessert. We need to hit the final and greatest leg of our journey. Walt Disney World, 1996, and the 25th anniversary celebration, starring me. Uh, but don't we have to wait 30 minutes? Nah, that's just swimming, not time travel. Just make sure you transport us somewhere safe. OK, I'll do my best. Presto changeo. Where are we? Welcome to Blizzard Beach, the largest of Walt Disney World's three water parks. It's like a ski resort in the middle of sunny Florida. Legend has it that one year, a freak blizzard hit this part of Walt Disney World, freezing everything in its path. So, the Disney Imagineers decided to build a ski resort. But when the weather turned warm, ski slopes turned into water slides. And instead of hitting the powder, you're hitting the surf. Now you can take a sky lift to the top of Mount Gushmore and then slide down from Summit Plummet at 65 miles an hour any faster and you'll get a ticket. And see, this time when we made the time jump, nothing went wrong. Uh-oh. What? Where's Peter? I made him invisible? All right, I lost him. Peter! Peter! Pumpkin eater! So, uh, come here often? How old are you? Well, let's see, it's 1996, so that would make me 36 years old. Yeah, right, and I can time travel. <laughs> That's it! I'm 
a time traveler. I can even prove it. Don't miss a special sneak preview of Hercules when Witching You Were Here returns after this. Credit anniversary special. Peter! 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 Hey, what the? Let me see. Oh, that's a brand new boardwalk resort. It recreates the charm and flavor of the classic Atlantic City boardwalk of yesteryear. What's next to it? That's the Disney Institute, an interactive discovery resort where you can learn to make a souffle, rock climb, or direct a television show. Oh, there's Pleasure Island, a nighttime party spot where you can laugh at the comedy warehouse, two stab at the neon armadillo, enjoy some jazz, dance the night away, and celebrate the new year. Because every night is New Year's Eve on Pleasure Island. Hey, you guys. Peter, where have you been? I've been with Dee Dee. Hey, can she come with us? Of course she can. She just has to put something on, like clothes and 50 pounds. Welcome to Epcot 1996. They're celebrating the 25th anniversary with tons of new stuff. Okay, you can't miss Innoventions. It's an interactive showcase where you can discover tomorrow's technology today, virtual reality, and cyberspace. What's cyberspace? You know the video game Pong? Of course. Okay, well, it's like that, but even better. Check it out. All right. While the kids are off getting a cyber life, why don't we have some coffee and get to know each other? Okay, why don't we just take a look at all the other cool stuff in Epcot? For a thrilling whitewater ride, climb aboard a Viking ship in Norway that takes you through troll country. Oh look, there's my first agent. Hi, Bernie. In Future World, ride the hydrolator down to Sea Base Alpha, an underwater research facility. Or take a trip through a Caribbean coral reef in the world's largest saltwater tank at the Living Seas. Wow, at the Universe of Energy, there's a great new show, Ellen's Energy Adventure, which gives you a crash course on the resources that power our world. In Body Wars, you can get right down to the heart of the matter with a fantastic voyage into inner space, or let it all go to your head in the wacky Cranium Command. And there's also the amazing 3D adventure, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience. Whoa. Huh? I see my ex-boyfriend finally got a job. <laughs> but if you want to see something really scary, go to the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror at the Disney MGM Studios. It's really scary. Inside this 1930s Hollywood hotel, you'll encounter the creepiest ride in all of the Disney parks. An elevator ride through time and space that ends up with a sudden unexpected plummet that will have even the bravest passengers screaming, ah! You know, I think the Tower of Terror might have been a little too scary for someone as old as Caroline. Uh, I'm seeing spots. What kind of spots? Black ones on white, like in the 101 Dalmatians backstage pass. This new attraction showcases the elaborate sets, the animatronic Dalmatians and creatures that turn this animated classic into a live action blockbuster. Is Disney still making animated films? Of course, and better than ever. On the animation tour at Disney MGM Studios, you can see just how an animated film is made and maybe get a glimpse of the upcoming Disney feature, Hercules! What you folks need is a hero. Yeah? 
And who are you? I happen to be a hero. From the creators of Aladdin and the Little Mermaid comes the legendary story of Hercules. Yes, my soul. Herc was on a road. He was born to the gods. Look how cute he is. He is a sucker for the little sucker. <laughs> and destined to become a hero on Earth. And a hero is only as good as his weapon. <laughs> by defeating the forces of evil. Zero to hero. This kid gonna mess up my hostile takeover bit or what? Featuring a cast of wildly imaginative new characters. Use your head! The spirited and independent Meg. Did they give you a name along with all those rippling pectorals? Philotides. Call me Phil. Herc's personal trainer. Don't let your guard down because of a pair of big blue eyes. Hades, lord of the underworld. Hey, mention my name, you'll get a doom with a view. And his henchman, Pain and Panic. I thought I smelled a rat. We are! Next summer, get ready to rumble! Disney's 35th all-new animated feature. All right, all right! The Man. Hercules! 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 The Myth. I'm an action figure! The Movie. Hercules. Why does that name ring a bell? Maybe we owe him money? Get dizzy! We dance, we kiss, we schmooze, we carry on, we go home happy. What do you say? Ooh, I love that Hercules. The strong, silent type, even though he is a bit animated. Hey, let's check out some other animated characters at Mickey's Toontown Fair in the Magic Kingdom. Great. I would love to live there. Do you think Mickey needs a mouse keeper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mickey's house is too fantastic. Makes me feel like we're in a real cartoon. See? <gasps> Let me try. <laughs> Quit goofing around. We need to check out the new Tomorrowland. It's a neon energized sci fi wonderland. You can blast off to thrills on the Astro Orbiter or discover the Timekeeper. And if you dare, step into the ultra-scary, extra-terrestrial alien encounter where you get to feel the hot breath, smell the slimy stench of a carnivorous alien on the loose. Sounds like my last blind date. And if we had time to go further into the future, we could visit Disney's Animal Kingdom, a theme park where you get up close and personal with your animal friends, real and imagined. It too will have you guessed it, an iconic structure. The wondrous tree of life that towers 140 feet above the park. Look, they've already started on it. Or we could have fun in the sun on the Disney Magic, the first ship of the Disney Cruise Line. And coming to Epcot in early 1997 is Test Track, presented by GM. It's Disney's fastest and longest ride ever. This 65 mile per hour adventure takes you into the super secret world of automobile testing. Uh-oh, I don't have much time before the big 25th anniversary Remember the Magic Parade. I've got to be there for the grand finale. <laughs> well, then we better hurry if we want to catch everything. Last one to Space Mountain's a rotten alien. Oh, watch this, I'll catch you later. Wait up!
gets to meet Quasimodo when Witching You Were Here continues after this. You Were Here, Walt Disney World's 25th anniversary special. Wow, that was great. We don't have to leave, do we? No, not until you've had dessert. <laughs> but we've already had dessert. Not like this. Wow, can we eat it? You'll need a giant fork. For the 25th anniversary, the Walt Disney Imagineers outdid themselves. They turned Cinderella Castle into a gigantic birthday cake, complete with candles and everything. It's a feast for the eyes. Well, it's been great having you along for Walt Disney World's 25th anniversary special. Thanks for joining me. Oh, wait a second. Oops. <laughs> I've got to get you kids back to 1971. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Your magic hasn't been too precise so far. Yeah. Excuse me, I think I've got it this time. Mm. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. It worked. Ah, I finally figured it out. I had to use Disney magic. Oh. Now, don't forget what I told you guys. We, we won't. Let me hear it. Buy VHS, not Betamax. See where comic books will be worth a lot of money someday. And don't give away our polyester clothes. They're going to make a comeback. You remembered. I'm going to miss you guys. I'm really going to miss you. Don't even think about forgetting me. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. You think we'll ever see Caroline again? I sure hope so. She forgot the book. Hey, I've got a hunch that we can go back right now. How? Bippity boppity boo. You're kidding. I don't believe it. So your place has river views and cathedral ceilings. Oh, hey, yeah. come on. Peter, Susie, what are you doing here? You left this behind. <laughs> Besides, we never got to be in the parade. Yeah. Well, let's go. OK. Yeah. Let's do this again in another 25 years.